Hey everyone, it's Rich from Billet Spin. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is machining. We're not going to talk about tops quite as much, which might puzzle you, but uh, there's been a lot of questions lately as far as the different types of machines and the machining processes and what it really takes to make a part like a top, um, how to machine it. So. That's what I'd like to talk to you about today. It's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I've been machining since I was 13 years old. My dad started our company back in 1986, and uh, I've been machining ever since. And uh, so there's a lot of misconceptions in the world as far as machining, especially CNC machining. And uh, so that's what I'd like to, to talk about today. My goal is that uh, hopefully after this video you can kind of look out in the world at things and, and maybe have a little better idea of how things are made. And hopefully that will help gain an appreciation for, um, you know, just the work that went into a lot of this stuff. So um, I think we're going to start out with uh, um, the differences between a CNC machine and a manual machine. So the difference, the only difference, honestly, is the fact that on a CNC machine, the computer controls the movement of the machine. Uh, it's not necessarily any more accurate. Um, it just allows us to do more complex geometries than what you would be able to accomplish on a manual machine. And the biggest benefit of a CNC is repeatability. After the first piece is done, you know, whatever operation, uh, you can repeat that operation uh, much faster than what you can on a manual machine. But the amount of work, skill, talent that it took to use a manual machine to create um, functional pieces, you know, back before CNC's existed, uh, you know, you look at some of the things, you know, big ships and, and uh, you know, just... Um, you know, World War II weapons and stuff. All that stuff was was machined by hand, turning you know dials and levers, pulling levers by hand on a manual machine. And it takes just an enormous amount of st uh, skill to be able to generate parts that they generated back then on a manual machine. Now, when it comes to CNC, we can do more complex things than what you can on a manual. And so what that means is that, yes, um, it's, it's easier to make some geometries, but because you're doing more difficult things on a CNC, um, that adds to the difficulty level. There is, uh, I don't think, any more skill uh, in that it takes, you know, between a manual and a CNC. Both have, um, you know, they're, they're both, you know, tops that are made, on a manual machine compared to tops that are made on a CNC machine, um, both, you know, uh, th th there's there's no one better than the other. Uh, it's just different. It's just two different things. And so anyway, I, I hope that that helps. Um, anything that you can do on a manual, you can do on a CNC. The reality is, is that, and this a lot of people don't know, is that if I had to make just one piece of a, of a more simple uh, design, uh, you know, let's take a top for example, I would actually be able to make that top faster on a manual than I would on a CNC. In fact, I will tell you I could actually make it substantially faster on a manual compared to a CNC. So a lot of people don't realize that, um, but that is the, that is the case. Um, now, you can use a CNC as a manual. Uh, a lot of people might not know that. You can, there's what's called a pulse handle on a CNC machine, and you can use that to move the machine around just like you would move a manual machine. Um, so that's something that some of you might not have known. Okay, so let's get into the, the difficulty in machining. A lot of people think that designing is the difficulty in machining. And I can assure you um, that I, I wouldn't necessarily say the designing. I would say the programming. The programming itself is the easiest part of, of a CNC machine. It is extremely simple. I can train almost anybody to do that. Um, the way that I program, I program on the machine. And so uh, it does take a lot of math skills in order to program. 
uh, the way that we do here. And so if you're not uh, real familiar with trigonometry, you would struggle with that. Uh, there are some things that you just would not be able to do. Um, and that's just the way that we do it here on the machine, but a lot of places use CAD CAM, and, and, uh, but that has its own hurdles to, uh, to it as well. So let's get into, I don't want to make this video too long, let's get into what is the most difficult thing of CNC machining, and this goes right in hand with manual too, so what is the, the hardest part of machining, period? It is methodology, no question, hands down. Uh, any any machinist will tell you that methodology is the hardest part. So what I mean by that, I want you to look at this top. This is our navigator top, and I want you to to see it's made of three pieces. And I want you to tell me how would you make that? I have I could design this uh, in a in a CAD software, and the CAD you know the CAM part of it would generate the program. But how do you actually do it? All right, so. Here's a, here's a chunk of material. I want you to turn that into that. What steps are you going to use? How are you going to hold on to it? What, uh, you know, what types of tooling are you going to use? How are you going to, um, you know, how are you going to go from one operation to the next? Where do you start? The thing about a top is that a lot of people don't know this, but in order to make a top not wobble, wobble is the enemy when it comes to making tops. Well, you have to hold some things very, very close tolerance in relationship to other things. For example, this ball has to be concentric to this OD, and the outside diameter here, and to the back of the stem within five ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, that's one fourth the thickness of a human hair. If it is more than that, uh, it will wobble. Now, the other thing that we have to do is keep the perpendicularity of the face of the collar to the stem within that same tolerance, five tenths, five ten thousandths. When we machinist terms, we call those tenths, uh, five ten thousandths of an inch. That is uh, that's tight. You know that that's that's uh, that's not easy to do. Period. And if that is out at all, then this top is junk. And we might have like this this piece of superconductor that you have in this top. That's eighty dollars right there. That little piece right there cost me actual cost eighty dollars. So if you mess that up, you know, get a little piece of lint in there when you grab on it. This this part is junk. Period. And there's no way to fix it. So, but anyways, going back to the original point, how would you do this? How would you make this top? What would you do first? You start out with some raw material. You have two different, well, you have the, the stem material, you have the inner disc material, and you have this outer collar. What do you do first? The methodology coming up with it, um, that's the difficult part. And this particular top takes five separate operations to make complete. From start to finish, there are there's five operations. Um, and one of those actually has two operations, so you technically could say six operations in order to make this from start to finish. Coming up with those operations, that is the hard part. And it's not just on tops. Um, I'm going to, uh, even though we're in the top group here, I'm going to show you a part that we made. Um, this part's been laying in one of our guys' toolbox for a long time. But I just want to, this is going to get into a different um, aspect of the difficulty of machining and I hope this will help. So this particular piece is split. This is actually two pieces, one piece here, one piece down here. The bore here, this hole, is the tolerance on it is two tenths, two ten thousandths of an inch uh, total tolerance. So that means it's 40 times tighter, closer, than the thickness of a human hair or a piece of paper. Those are about four thousandths of an inch. And here's the next problem. So that's ridiculously tight. Then the concentricity from the bore to the OD has to be within four tenths, four ten thousandths of an inch. Like I say, we, we go short on that. Um, but then here's the biggest problem with this part. That's, that's difficult in itself. But now what you have is a slot like this. What you need to understand is that all materials have what's called stress in it. You know, stress like you when you're having a bad day and, uh, you know, your muscles are all tight. Um, it's exactly the same in material. This material does not want to be this way. This material has a different shape that it wants to be in. And what happens is as you machine material away, 
it becomes weaker in areas and that weakness allows the material to revert back to the way that it wants to be uh, you know stress free just like we just like we want to be right so as you machine this little cutout i can tell you normally this wants to spring straight like this okay so after machining this still holding a two tenths total tolerance um, that's difficult. This little part right here had about 10 operations. 10 operations to make this little tiny part. Um, and coming up with the order of those 10 operations, that is the difficult part. That is the difficult part. Um, here's another part I'll just get into real quick because this video is getting kind of long. Um, this part here. Okay, you have a 3D model of this part. That's great. Here, here's your material, okay? Here's your material, there's your part. How are you going to make that? You know, I mean, it's great to have a 3D model, but how are you going to do that? You know, and like I said, that, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but that is the difficult part of machining. Um, and, uh, you know, I just can't stress that enough. The last part, the last part of machining that's extremely difficult is just the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different choices that we have in tooling. Um, I'd love to take you out there and go through this. This video is already getting too long, but there are so many different choices that we have for tooling and, uh, and learning all of the different uses for all of that. There's a lot that goes along with it. Let me just give you one more as we, as we uh, end here. A part like this one. Here's one thing that really blows people's minds, and it still blows my mind, to be honest with you. We can have a run of this. Let's say that we get a job for these, and we make a hundred of these. And six months later, we get another order for these. The material can be totally different. Um, there can be different stress in the material. And the way that we made it the first time might not work the second time. So even though you've made a part, have a program, and everything ran perfect, that doesn't mean it's going to be that way the next time. And sometimes you have to reinvent the entire process in order to, to make the part that time because something's different. The stress in the material, the material composition. You know, material compositions, there's a big range um, that a material can fit into the different um, actual elements that make up the material. There's a range, and, and so there's quite a variety or range that those elements can be and still be classified as that grade of material. A lot of people don't know that. So um, that's a little bit to it. Here's, here's another thing I can tell you. Um, it, you know, a lot of it is just the cost that's involved. Um, let's say that a customer sends you some material and a material cost is, you know, 500 bucks and you have, you know, four days of machining. So you got a part that, you know, costs eight, nine thousand dollars. There's only one part. There's no extras and it's a complex part and you can't mess it up. That happens all the time in the job shop environment. Um, and the customer, you know, could be a big customer uh, with a line down experience. They need that part um, and it's an emergency. They're going to, you know, have to shut a whole line down if you don't get them that part. And you can't make any mistakes. Um, it can be very difficult. So we can spend all day going through all of this stuff, but I hope that that gives you a little taste as far as what machining is. I am not telling you that this is the most difficult thing on the planet because, like I said, I can do it. Um, I have a lot to learn yet. Uh, I learn new stuff every day. and uh, But it is difficult. Um, it is stressful. It does take skill. It does take talent. And uh, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of good, intelligent people come through the door that, um, you know, this just wasn't a good fit for them. Uh, they, they literally could not learn this trade. And, uh, and I think that's true with anything. So anyway, hope it helps. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day.